Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to animate a walking character using a existing character sprite sheet. I'm going to be using a combination of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects for today's tutorial. To get started I'm going to open my sprite sheet files that I've downloaded uh, from the internet. Now, these are available in the lesson resources that I've shared with you. In the sprite sheet files, there is an EPS file and a JPEG file. I'm going to be using the EPS file today. It's just slightly higher quality. Open that up in Photoshop. It's going to ask me what size I want. I'm leaving it at the default here and selecting OK. What you're going to see on your screen now is that you have six different character positions. These are the six different character positions required for a walking sequence. So if we played these one at a time at speed, it would appear that the bear is walking. Now, what you need to remember when we're looking at animations is there is two parts to walking. The first is the character changing or the sprite sheet changing in all of the different parts of the walking movement. And then additionally, there is the keyframes around the position elements where it actually makes the character move positions across the screen. So to get started, I'm going to use my quick selection tool, or sorry, my magic wands tool. And I'm going to, at the top, make sure I have contiguous uh, turned off. And I'm going to click on the background. You'll see it's selected all the background areas. And I'm going to press delete. Now that I've done that, Command D will clear the screen for me. I can select any other areas if I need to delete other aspects and that's now clean enough for me. I don't need to delete everything out. Uh, that's all I'm going to work with. I'm going to go down to the slice tool now. So it's uh, under the sub menu of the crop tools. Right click to see the options there. Sele select the slice tool option and then just begin by drawing your first box around your first sprite. Now with these, there's no need for you to get the boxes that you're cutting identical in size. Uh, however, you need to make sure uh, that you have all parts of the character included. You also need to make sure that you don't include the numbers at the bottom. Okay, obviously we're not going to want those in our animation. And once you've got all six, you should have something looking roughly like that. You're now ready to export these to individual images. So we're going to go File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And this gives us the opportunity to save these as individual files. I'm going to select PNG 24 as the default. I'm going to select all holding the shift key to select my six characters. You'll see that they become a little bit more vibrant when I click on them. Once I've got all of those, just make sure PNG 24 is selected for all of those. And I press the save button. When I press the save button, a little dialog box comes up and it asks me, okay, well, where do you want to save these? For today's tutorial, I'm just going to put them on the desktop, nice and easy. In the slices, I'm going to select the slices only. That way it's only going to pick the six characters that I've selected. And I might just call this walking bear. Walking bear sprite and save. That's now done and I'm ready to leave Photoshop. And I don't need to save it before I close. Now on my desktop, I have this folder here with my different walking bear positions. And you'll see if I just scroll through those on my computer, I already have that little bit of a walking motion. That's perfect. Now I'm moving into Adobe After Effects. In Adobe After Effects, I start by creating my first composition. This composition is going to be called Walking Bear. In the presets, I'm going to uh, simply select that I want it to be 1200 wide and let's go 600 tall. 24 frames per second and for the duration here I'm going to set my duration at the moment to be 5 seconds with a background colour of white. Okay. Now I've got the option in my composition window to change this to fit so it actually fits on my screen okay, so you can see the canvas is sitting there and I'm now ready to add my characters in. So I go to the finder menu, select all of my walking bears, drag them into my project panel. Now that they're in my project panel, I'm ready to add them into my project. So I drag them down to the timeline here and you'll see I've now got all six of my characters on the screen. 
When I copy those down, all six characters are playing for the entire five second duration, all at the same time. So if I drag my slider across to preview, you'll see there's no movements at all because these are static images and they're all displayed. In order for it to be animation, I need one to display at a time. So what's going to happen is I'm going to shrink the length of these to somewhere around here. I'm going to right click while they are all selected. In the keyframe assistant, I'm going to select sequence layers. In sequence layers, I have the opportunity of whether I want to overlap these or not. I don't want to overlap in this case, and I select OK. You'll see now what that's done is it's gradually sequenced each of the layers. And now when I drag my slider across, I have a small amount of animation. Now, the last thing you'll notice is my animation finishes right here at around about the 4.05 mark. And I've got all of this space here where there's nothing on screen. I now just go back to the walking bear composition, change the composition settings, and reduce the time to whatever I need it to be. I'm going to change mine to uh, 4.05 for now. Test whether that looks OK. Press the spacebar key to preview. And you'll see that looks quite good. One thing that I will notice, <coughs> excuse me, is that looking at this particular character on this layer, it looks like the character steps backwards a little bit, which shouldn't be the case. So I'm going to, while that layer is selected, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to reposition it slightly in the hope that it looks like my character is moving forward. That means I now need to move this one slightly forward. So you can play around with the position elements to make it look like your character is walking. Now that makes it look like they're physically moving across the screen, but that's actually going to be detrimental to our process here. So avoid doing that, select all of them, okay? and you actually want to position them so that they have some level of consistency in their layout. So best thing to do would be leave them where they were originally, okay? because when we loop this later, we're going to find out that this works quite well for us. So I'm just going to put these positions back. If you had major discrepancies, absolutely you could be doing some movements there, but there's no need for you to make any major changes. So I've got a, I've got a walking bear now. I can close this composition. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to right-click New Composition. I'm going to call this one Walking in the Woods. Same canvas size. This one is going to go for 20 seconds. OK. And so I've now got this 20 second composition sitting there. I'm going to get the walking bear and drag it into my walking in the woods composition. First thing that I do is press play just to preview. You will see I've got this wonderful walking bear. However, if you paid attention there, you would notice that I've run out of walking bear. So I need to I need to extend this and I need to loop it to fill the full 20 seconds. Now, I could copy and paste many of these, use my keyframe assistant in the same way that I did earlier to sequence those layers, but that's not what we're going to do today. Instead, I'm going to show you how to use some After Effects expressions, such as loop, and I'm also going to show you how to do some time remapping. So if we get started, we're going to right click in time and select Enable Time Remapping. This gives me the opportunity to drag the length of my animation to a much longer period. And when I preview that, again, you're going to notice that after that initial four seconds of animation, there's still nothing on screen. While I've extended the length of this composition, I haven't actually looped any of the animation that's happening. So by holding the Option key and clicking on the little timeline, it opens up the expressions window where I'm able to type in some code here. I'm going to type in the code loop and it brings up some, pre some uh, selected code. I'm going to use loop out and press tab. Then using inverted commas, I'm going to press cycle and then click away. By doing this, I've actually put this set of keyframes to cycle repeatedly throughout my animation. 
And you'll see that now this walking bear goes for the full 20 seconds. Now, what we can do here is we can actually then start playing with some of our other elements, such as we could change the scale, shrink our, shrink our bear down slightly so that the bear can walk across the bottom of the screen. And I'm gonna start him just out here. So I'll put him at the bottom first and then just out to the side. And I'm going to set a positional keyframe back here on the start of the animation. And then at the last 20 seconds, I'm going to move this position of the bear across to the side. And I now have a finish keyframe. Simply pressing the space bar to preview. Now, I have a bear that is gradually walking all the way across the screen. This isn't so exciting until you've got a background included. So if you have the opportunity to put a background on, I suggest you do that. I've got a background that I've prepared earlier. So I'll go back into my files here, download my background and the walking bear animation my background in there, rescale it as required to fill the screen. And by previewing this, I've now got a bear gradually walking in the woods. Now on its own, that's a cool enough animation, but if I wanted to go a little bit further and make it look a little bit more realistic, what we do is we use this concept called parallax where we get the background to move independent from the character to make it look like the camera is following the character as they walk through the woods. So in this sense, I would need to scale up ever so slightly, set my position elements to keyframe at the beginning. In the last 20 seconds, I would then reposition my background by dragging it to the side. And now by previewing, what you're going to see is not only is the bear walking across the screen, but because the background is moving independently using the concept of parallax, it actually looks like the camera is following this bear as it walks through the wood as well. So now you've successfully completed the animation. You've used a sprite sheet to create a walking character. You've used position and scale keyframes. You've used time remapping and you've used After Effects expressions to loop out on a continuous cycle the preset animation of the walking bear composition you've created. Our last step here is that we need to then save this and export this so that we can actually use this as a GIF. So in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is file and save my project so I don't lose it. When I save this, I'm going to call this walking in the woods. That's the first thing you should always save your work. Second thing, I'm going to go file menu. I'm going to go to export and add to media encoder queue. While this is happening, I can hear my computer is starting to overheat a little bit, so I'm going to start quitting some of the programs that I'm not using anymore, including After Effects, which I no longer need. Once I've sent this to Media Encoder, Media Encoder on its own is able to load up that After Effects file, and so I can reduce the amount of uh, stress that's being put on my computer. From within Media Encoder, I'm going to select the GIF preset, which gives me the opportunity to create an animated image that loops automatically on repeat, uh, similar in a uh, way that you would a meme on, meme on your computer. Okay? When Media Encoder first opens up, you'll see this window here, and eventually the queue will be empty. Eventually, your file will load here. If it doesn't, you can always press the plus button to add a source in, but my, my experience is give it a little bit of time, not too long, but give it a, a minute or so just to see if it is loading because you don't want to overdo your uh, overdo your computer with too much processing requirements. Now, the other thing I'll show you around in the media encoder is you've got a whole heap of presets down here, all of the different file formats that it can export your file as. And so that's really important if you're specifically looking for a file to be used on YouTube or to be used on Facebook or to be used as a GIF, there are a whole heap of presets there that actually makes it a lot easier for you when you're trying to upload because it means your videos and animations are in the right format. So I can see this hasn't added to the queue in the way that I wanted it to. So I'm going to go in, make my way through to where my file is, walking in the woods. This is the one that I've been working on and click open. And it's adding it in here to my queue. Okay, 
it's asking for a few permissions, that's not a problem at all. I want to use the Walking in the Woods composition because it's going to ask me which one it wants to use. Here you can see in the preset menu which one do I want to use. I've selected animated GIF. Haven't made any changes here. Output file, you pick a location where you want this to be stored. For today I'm going to store this on my desktop so it's just so it's easy for us to get to. And I press the start button. Down the bottom here you'll see it has a, uh, a little menu bar there. Gives you some information about the progress, how your animation is going. For a 20 second animation, you could expect on your computer anywhere from uh, five second export, probably more realistically up to around about a minute though, okay, a minute and a half. And you'll see that gives you a bit of a, um, a preview there and it shows you exactly what it's working on. And obviously the bigger size of your canvas, the more frames per second and the longer duration will obviously make some serious impacts into the quality um, sorry, there's file size, but also into the time it takes for this exporting to happen. Now, the last thing that I'll mention regarding Media Encoder is GIF as a encoding system isn't built in natively to After Effects. After Effects is really more around the video production. So if you wanted a specific file type, like a GIF for example, Media Encoder is the best way to get that in the most efficient manner. Okay, so around about 10 more seconds and then I'll be ready to preview this with you and just show you on screen and then that'll be the end of the tutorial today. There we go, final seconds now. And that's it, we're done. Now if you've ever lost your export and you can't find it, once it's completed, up here the link will become active in the output file. You'll be able to click on that and it will show you exactly where you've got it stored. If you haven't saved your After Effects project before you click it, your file is going to be sitting somewhere in the temporary directories of your computer, um, which is quite a frustrating place for it to be. All right, so here we are on the desktop. There's a GIF file. If I open that, because I'm on a Mac, straight away it's going to open it in preview. And when it opens in preview, it's going to open and show me each individual frame here rather than actually playing it for me. So easiest way to preview, right click, Open with, just open it in Google Chrome. Google Chrome is obviously able to play your GIF for you and isn't going to show you the individual frames. And there you go. I've now got a successfully completed 1200 by 600 animation of a walking bear using the parallax feature to make the background look that little bit more exciting. So you can play around with different character sprites. You can also increase the speed of the walking motion by reducing the duration of each individual uh, sprite image. So minus sitting at around about 0.8 of a second, you probably want to reduce it so that the whole walking cycle happens within one second. Um, so you need to shrink that in and then your repeating processes are all the same. Hope this one's been really helpful for you. If you need any further assistance, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. I'm happy to help out. Thanks.